Hi, I'm Troy, creative data scientist.net, helping data scientists come together, share experiences and knowledge, so we can serve to inspire others in organising, packaging and delivering information. Come with me as I give it a quick demonstration on insight and innovation for the data scientists. Okay, so here's my demo and presentation on insight and innovation for the data scientists. Now, first up, I want to give a little overview of data science, and uh, this de um, definition has come from a recent article that was written by Dan, uh, Ben Lorica, who um, is a data scientist at O'Reilly Media really great article and I'll be sure to put a link to it at the, underneath this uh, video. The first point um, is about data acquisition. Now, as a data scientist, you need to acquire data and um, you can get that data from a number of different ways. And uh, in, a, in a sense, getting the data can be quite a science in itself. Once you have the data, we then need to manage it and uh, we need to put it physically in a spot, we need to make sure the formats are correct, uh, give it a standardised uh, rep representation and also things like backups and, and access to that data, it's all coming under data management. The third point is about information visualisation, so um, at, the, at the presentation layer we want to present the data in a visualisation that brings meaning to the people who are looking at it. And there are a lot of great tools and a lot of different ways you can visualise the information and present that visualisation to people. Point four is about analytics. And uh, there are some really sophisticated, sophisticated ways that you can take data, analyse it, um, and, Form statistical analysis on it, or um, mashing data sets together. Step, uh, point five is about insight and innovation, which is what this presentation is about. So I'm going to expand on and bring it up and talk a little bit about insight and innovation. So under this here, we have. Insight and innovation really has two parts. One is about a new understanding, and two is about a new product. So you can have insight or an innovation about a new understanding, you can have insight and innovation about a new product. And uh, not to add um, a, a level of complexity um, that, that isn't necessary, but um, I'd like to talk briefly about quantum theory and uh, a, a, um, Fenman's alternative histories. Now, Fenman's alternative histories suggest that a particle moves between point A and point B by an infinite number of possible paths. Now, if a particle has an infinite number of possible paths to move from point A to point B, how complicated is it for a human? Well, it can be quite complicated, and I believe, actually, we do have an infinite number of 
responsible for the past week and moved from a current position to a new position. So what I have over here is a framework to help us out. And out of this framework, I've been able to, it's been quite successful for me in applying it in my data science roles. And um, I want to present it to see if it uh, can help others. Um, possibly I might be able to help others as well. So let's look at the framework of insight and innovation moving from current to new. First of all, we have a number of uh, knowledge aspects and we have a number of, of technology aspects. At the knowledge level, we ask what, what we currently have, how, how we came to be where we are, and who, who was involved in uh, getting us to where we are right now, or the system, and why uh, was the system developed, and why is it, is it comes about that uh, this, what we're talking about up here actually exists. Then in the technology aspects, we have a level of organizing. Organizing data covers things like acquisition and data management. Packaging data covers things like visualization and analytics. It's all about manipulating it into a package. Delivering data is at the highest level and um, is about giving that deeper insight into those who are looking at it. Now another way of looking at this is um, some, a method I think of is this is at the physical, this is at the logical, and this is at the notional levels of technology and applied to data science. So those questions there, um, got by answering those and looking and analyzing those aspects, we get a nice snapshot of our current position. So we know where we are at point A. Now let's look at point B, we're being in a new position, and we use the same set of questions. But uh, the, the, now we put a future tense on it, and we are looking at knowledge in the sense of what we want to move towards, how we think we might get there, who is involved in helping us to get there, and why we even want to try. So at the technology aspects, we again, we still have organizing packaging to deliver information. Uh, we would need to organize our data uh, so with a, pu a future organization um, plan and a, a way we want to package that data and the way we want to deliver it. So answering those questions at both the current and the new gives us a nice path and eliminates those infinite possibilities of us getting from here to here with a plan on how we might um, achieve that. So uh, I want to quickly sort of bring about an, another level of understanding if there's still uh, inquiries about what the hell I'm talking about here. Let's look at some um, content behind these questions. So everything in the black is the context the blue is some um, content, and I literally wrote this content in, um, just thinking about it as I was writing it. So uh, I haven't really put a lot of thought behind it, but uh, hopefully it adds um, a, a better, more understanding than confusion. But uh, let's just go through it. So what is, let's talk about big data. In our current situation, there's this thing called big data. How was it brought about? Well, it was brought about because the, um, Decreasing cost in space that um, it, it, it costs to um, store things, and the increasing um, levels of technology that allows us to access that data. So, decreasing cost in storing things and increasing capacity to read it brought about this big data situation. Who was involved? Well, sort of put the, the world there, it's a bit general, but you know. Um, it uh, covers everything, and then why? Why did this come about? And um, my thoughts on it is it's all about humans' aspect to strive for more information. Um, we naturally 
creative and, and looking for information and ways to um, learn and, and, and move forward. And uh, that's why we, we're in this, in my opinion, why we're in this big uh, situation as a strive for information. So let's look at some examples of the technology behind it. Um, when we're organizing data, the cloud could be seen as an organization, as an organized uh, aspect. Mobiles would be a packaged uh, data aspect, and delivering is um, something like an open data open access or the internet um, delivery mechanism for delivering big data. So that's a snapshot of our current situation applied to the model and framework that um, I'm talking about here and find useful. Let's look at the future. So what if we wanted to move to a big value uh, proposition? So we're transferring from a big data to a big value. How might we get there? We might use data science and the data science um, uh, aspect to convert that data to value. Who will be involved? Still the world. Now, why might we want to do that? Well, um, I, again, my thoughts on it is that it's really at an aspect that we have so much information now, uh, it's, it's really not a goal to get more information. It's really at this level of transformation. We want him to move um, to, a, to a level where we actually uh, access our information to transform the situation and essentially be innovative. So, that is why I think we, uh, well, that's why I would suggest such a move to big value. And uh, let's look at some quickly some uh, content behind organizing, packaging, and delivering. Now, the concept here is just to move from here to here, and I'll just quickly put some 2.0s next to cloud, mobile, and open. Now, I, I just Googled before, and I know these things exist, but my point is that we're moving from something that we have to something that's more advanced without going too detail onto what the innovation is. I just want to give a content overview. So hopefully that's brought about a uh, understanding of the framework and the model behind uh, it being insightful and innovative as data scientists. And this framework will be available at datascientist.net. Uh, slash innovation. So if you go to www.datascientist.net slash innovation, you'll get access to the PDFs and, and templates and guides that I'll be supplying that has this written out for you. However, there is these aspects down here. What we were talking about just then was being creative and creating something, but um, there's no point creating something if it's not relating to people. So there's two aspects to being in a innovative. One, creating something, and two, it's relating it um, to people who find it innovative. So what is behind relation? Well, relation is all about having a positive influence on people. So if there isn't a positive influence on people, then it's hard for them to relate to it and it won't be considered innovative. So um, that's the presentation and I uh, hope you found it useful. Oh yeah, and there's one more thing that I want to do is uh, give you a quick book list of the books I've been reading recently to uh, come up with the basis behind this presentation. And first being Stephen, the, the Grand Design, Stephen Hawkins and Leonard Labnow. Uh, very interesting read. Your Money in Your Brain by Jason Zwick. This book I read quite a while ago, but um, still a very good one. The Path of Least Resistance, Robert Fritz. Eckhart Tolle, 
the power of mouth. Dale Carnegie, Carnegie, how to win friends and influence people. And Robert Calvini, influence. And last, but certainly not least, this is a book by Brendan Burchard, who I'm finding as a really uh, great teacher. And um, I actually use his methods in presenting this whole thing and doing the YouTube. And the way I've uh, presented it out here has um, I've been following the guides of uh, Brendan Burchard and um, uh, his book, The Millionaire Messenger. It's another good book I've read recently. So that's it. For me, hope you enjoyed the presentation, and if you want more information or have questions, please look me up. My contact details are there at dartscientist.net.